Here we go, percentage error. So this is when you have an approximated value, so something you've actually calculated, and you wanna see how close it is to something that's exact or accepted. So we have a formula actually in your formula booklet. Uh, let me give it to you here. So it goes like this. We use this Greek letter epsilon here. It looks like an E, right? E for error. That's sort of how I think of it. I think of E, E for error. Um, and this one here, you can find it in your formula booklet. Let me make a nicer equal sign here. There we go. So first of all, it's got the absolute value of VA minus VE, all that over uh, VE. So it really helps to then discuss well, what are these different things, right? So that's why they tell you this. Oh, by the way, there's a times 100. Because you want the percent error, obviously, as a percent. You want to know, you know what percent off are you. So VA is your approximate value. That's the one you calculated. And VE is the exact value. So that's the, yeah, the exact one. This is it. Now, what does this mean, by the way? What is this one here? What's that? That means absolute. i got to write a better S here. Absolute value. That's what that means. That means if it's negative... Know, make it positive. That's just what it means, okay? So if it's negative, just make it positive. If it's positive, leave it positive. So let's actually take a look and see if we can do this. So this, by the way, this is the formula. You don't have to memorize it. You just have to know how to use it. So let's take a look at an example. What is the percent error if you estimate your bank balance to be $70, but it's actually 78.10? That's actually nice, right? You have more money in your account than you thought. So I think it's always a good idea to show the person marking it, either the examiner, if it's a real exam, or if it's your teacher, show them you know how to use the equation. So I would actually just set it up. You know, I'd say, all right, I'm going to use this equation right here, right? So this just shows the person you know what you're doing. All right, now what? I think it helps to identify the different variables. So let's take a look. Which one is the exact? Which one is approximate? We need to figure that out. The reason I like to do this is then it makes it really easy to know what to put in because it's, it's quite easy to just make a little mistake in what you're putting into your equation. That's where the mistakes often happen with students. They make such a silly little mistake and it would be a shame to lose marks for nothing, right? So VE, let's just say, so that's the exact value. The exact value is a 78.10. Then we have the VA, which is the approximate. Well, that's the 70. So it's just as simple as showing your substitution. What do I mean by substitution? Obviously, it's when you substitute. You put something in the calculator, or in this case, in the equation. So I would say absolute value of VA. So I would just say it's 70 minus 78.10, all that over uh, VE, which is 78.10, absolute value, and times 100. I need my calculator now. So I'm going to open up my TI Inspire. Uh, depending on what calculator you use, maybe you use this one. If so, I just press on, you know, just you're not sure how to do it. I press new, I'll do calculator. So we could just simply put in the numbers, you know, 70 minus 78.1 over 78.1 times 100. And we would end up with a negative number. You'd have to know that, oh, the absolute value means you make it positive. You can also do it directly. I just wanted to show you that as well. So on the TI Inspire, at least, you can do ABS, which stands for absolute value. And if you put in the open bracket, then it's ready to do your absolute value. So it'll take whatever was negative in there and make it positive. So let's do a nice pretty fraction here. That's this little symbol up here. So I go Control and there. And then I'll just put in my numbers. So 70 minus 78.10, all that over. Oops. There we go, 78.10. Now I could do enter, and of course I could do times 100, because that's what I need to do. That gives me it as a percent. And my answer is 10.37, let's just say. So we can say that right there. So 10.37%. So you're 10% off from the answer. Now if you want to do it to three significant figures, don't, don't forget, then we'll just say 10 point, and this is my third digit here is my third significant figure. And what I'll do is I'll look at the seven, tells me to round it up, so I'll say 10.4. There we go. So then I'm all done. That's how we do this. By the way, isn't this cute? Sorry, we can't trust you. Do you know why? Because the error bars are too big. That tells you something about, you know, the uncertainty on these. Just sort of a play on those. Now, why might you actually care? Well, percent error tells you how close you are to an actual value. You might 
care about that. So for example, something that's you know one percent off, well then it's really you know relatively close. Thirty five percent off is you know more. It's all relative. It depends what's okay, what your tolerance is. You know, if one percent means people die, you know, in a real situation, then one percent isn't good, right? But if it's you know a measurement of something you don't really care, then maybe ten percent off is okay. It's all relative, but what I like about percent error is it tells you about real numbers, how far off they are from what's expected. There we go. I hope this is helpful.